Thank you all for coming and sharing in such an exciting event for us. I'd like to especially welcome Premier Giz, Honorable Doug Curry, Gordon McKay, the families of Eileen Fulford and Jean McKay, Dr. Vera Dewar, faculty, students, alumni, and other special guests. I would first like to give regrets from Dr. Kim Critchley, our Dean of Nursing, who has been called away as her father is having surgery this morning in Halifax. She sends her apologies and wishes us well. Wow, what an exciting event. We've been working towards this for a long time. Back when the School of Nursing was just being planned, I can remember Sister Mary Gabriel, for those who know her, um, director of the diploma program, advocating for a new building. Now it's a reality. I can also remember the first day that Doug Curry walked through our present school and he became acutely aware of the challenges that we faced and still face as a faculty of nursing. So what does this new building mean to us as a faculty and students? It's beyond words. On behalf of the faculty, I want to say that having a new building to accommodate our ever-expanding needs for teaching, research, and service is greatly appreciated. Nursing has never had a dedicated teaching space on campus, and now we will have three beautiful, well-designed classrooms to meet our needs. We were very strategic in planning for our teaching needs during the design phase of the building. We wanted flexible spaces that are student and teacher friendly, that meet the learning needs of our students, addressing all learning and teaching styles. As well, the Learning Resource Center will be the awe of most schools of nursing across the country. This space has been strategically planned to allow flexibility for student and faculty with attention to the technological advances required today in nursing education. We also will have a dedicated space for research, which is an important component of our commitment to the advancement of nursing practice on PEI. We have planned carefully for facilities for our research assistants to enhance faculty research programs, as well as graduate students who will enter our new master's program in the fall of 2011. We could not advance nursing education and nursing in our province without this new facility. This may be hard for people to imagine, but it is true. Since we accepted our first cohort of students into the accelerated nursing program, which I might add, have successfully completed their program, we have been in a major space crunch. For example, come January, when we are doing our communication labs, in our faculty lounge, which is about five feet by five feet, we'll be dreaming of next year when we can have lunch without interrupting our labs. In closing, I would like to say a personal thanks on behalf of our faculty to the people who are being honored here today through their incredible donations and foresight. Thank you. I'd like to call Dr. Christian Lacroix, Dean of uh, Science, to give brief remarks on behalf of the Faculty of Science. Thank you, Janet. Good morning, everyone. What's happening today uh, is due in large part to the hard work of many individuals we often refer to as uh, visionaries or founders at this institution. And one such individual was Estelle Redden. Estelle passed away a couple days ago, and I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge her contribution to the development of our Department of Family and Nutritional Sciences. Estelle taught at UPEI from 1971 until her retirement in 1993. She also chaired what was then called the Home Economics Department for six years and was actively involved in developing the current Women's Studies program at this institution. She was a true supporter of UPEI and a respected colleague. Our sincere sympathies are extended to her family and friends, and we believe that Ms. Redden would be proud of this new chapter for our Department of Family and Nutritional Sciences. The Faculty of Science is thrilled and honored to be part of this new building initiative. Uh, these new facilities will further support the tremendous amount of activities uh, that has taken place in the Department of Family and Nutritional Sciences in terms of research and also in terms of degree program development. 
And this includes our newest addition, the kinesiology program. So we look forward to sharing these facilities with our colleagues from the School of Nursing. It's my pleasure at this point to introduce Mr. Gordon McKay, the chair of the Development Fundraising and External Relations Committee of the Board. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lacroix. It is my pleasure to uh, pinch hit, if you will, for Fred Hyman. Fred is the chair of the Board of Governors of uh, the University of Prince Edward Island, and I'm a, a member of the uh, board, also chair of the committee, as Dr. Lacroix has pointed out, uh, that has some responsibility for what's taking place here today. Uh, the uh, Board of Governors is uh, mandated with the responsibility to oversee the development of the university uh, in, in conjunction with the administration, of course, uh, and this was a project that was supported at the board level, obviously with great enthusiasm. The uh, uh, president speaks to us re regularly about the growth of the University of Prince Edward Island. The uh, University of Prince Edward Island is a facility and, and an institution that as islanders we can all be extremely proud. The introduction of the accelerated nursing program and the introduction of a master of nursing uh, program made it necessary that a new facility be uh, constructed. We've heard from uh, Dr. Bryanton as to the physical uh, limitations of the existing facilities and we can see behind us here a very exciting new development which will no doubt assist all of the faculty and staff and students in uh, furthering the needs of the province with respect to the training of health professionals. The, uh, the Department of Family and Nutritional Services being introduced into the project w as well uh, allows for the opportunity to develop other programs such as the kinesiology program that will be introduced next year. The combination of the uh, family and nutritional services and the nursing programs is directed to overall uh, health and wellness which makes this a very important project for the province of Prince Edward Island and for all of us. The province, uh, the project itself is about approximately 11 million dollars, I think 10.8 million dollars and involves uh, public funding and private sector funding. The Premier is here with us today and, and uh, the Minister responsible to announce the province's contribution to the capital program, which is substantial, so I'll not steal your thunder, Mr. Premier, in that regard. But the, uh, this is to kick off the capital campaign, the purpose of this gathering, so that we can approach the public sector and the private sector to uh, raise the additional funds that are necessary to complete the program. It's my, uh, <coughs> excuse me, my pleasure and I guess my honor to uh, be able to formally kick off the campaign by making the short uh, uh, comments to you. Uh, I've been reminded by Tracy Camo that there are individuals present here that can speak to you about the, the details of the building. If you are interested in learning more about the building itself, we have uh, Director of Facilities Management, Greg Clayton. And Greg, perhaps if you could just raise your hand He's back at the back of the room here. <coughs> Excuse me, he can answer questions about the, the project. The manager of Capital Project, Wesley Power, right beside Greg, and I see Gary Bradshaw's here as well, who's uh, responsible for facilities overall as vice president here at UPEI. So with those comments, I formally announce the uh, commencement of this capital campaign, and uh, I thank you all for attending. Thanks very much, Gordon. And uh, it's very obvious that this project would never have come about if it hadn't been um, from the, the support from the province of PEI. And with that, I'd like to invite um, Premier Giz to come forward to say a few words. Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, President McLaughlin. Uh, special guests. Uh, this is truly a pleasure to be here today uh, for this uh, very exciting launch uh, of this campaign uh, for the new School uh, of Nursing in the Department of Family and Nutritional Sciences. Um, this is something that for me uh, has been a little over uh, three years in the making. And I'm just going to rewind uh, to the summer of 2007, shortly after I got elected Premier. 
Uh, and if there's someone that, uh, who's not here that we should be thanking uh, for this project today, believe it or not, it is actually uh, the Canadian ambassador to the United States of America. Uh, Gary Dore uh, was Premier of Manitoba uh, during the summer of 2007. And at the Premier's tables, I sit next to Manitoba. And uh, Gary and I started having a conversation uh, about shortages uh, in uh, nursing um, and what we can do uh, to help alleviate that problem. And I was saying how, you know, there used to be the two-year program a long time ago, and then it moved to a four-year degree, and it'd be nicer if we could get uh, some more nursing students through the system. And he said, well, we just launched this new program out in Manitoba called an Accelerating Nursing Program, and it takes about two years uh, for these nurses to go through who had some uh, previous training uh, beforehand or some previous education. And I said, geez, that sounds like a great idea. So as soon as I get back to Prince Edward Island, um, I ran it by uh, Doug Curry, who was our minister at the time, and uh, the deputy, and we came out to the university, and I believe I met with Wade, um, and probably Dr. Critchley, and we sat down, and uh, they said, we think we can do uh, an accelerating nursing program here at the university. And I said, fantastic, that'll be great. Will it take long to get up and running? They said, no, probably not. I go, how much will it cost? Uh, and they said, well, we'll probably need about half a million dollars a year from you. And I said, geez, this is great. Half a million dollars a year, uh, we'll be in great shape. And then they're like, well, we've got another problem, though. Uh, they go, if you want that accelerated nursing program, uh, we're having some issues with regards to space at the School of Nursing. Uh, so uh, the School of Nursing, uh, being very astute, uh, invited me out uh, for some tours uh, through uh, their facilities, and I was able to see uh, the facilities that they were in um, and how we definitely needed more space for not only to add the accelerating nursing program and new programs, but even for the uh, programs that were being offered then needed some new space. So uh, I said, uh, absolutely, uh, if the university delivers on the accelerating nursing program, helps out our health care system as they do uh, constantly, uh, we'll be there to help out uh, with regards to a new school of nursing. So really, uh, thank you to Gary Doerr uh, for kicking things off uh, from a provincial uh, perspective. Um, but uh, I'm very pleased to say uh, that the province of Prince Edward Island is contributing a little over $7 million uh, to uh, this capital campaign to start off. And this is uh, what I consider uh, money well spent. Uh, it will be uh, an investment uh, that helps out uh, our wonderful university here, helps out our healthcare system, uh, and uh, will help attract in uh, great faculty, will help attract in new students. Uh, so it's a win-win situation uh, all the way around. But as uh, Gordy mentioned, uh, today is also about kicking off uh, a campaign uh, with the private sector. I understand there's going to be a few announcements uh, later on, uh, but uh, as uh, if anyone can find a dollar out there, it's weighed. Um, and uh, as we know, uh, but uh, as we move into this season, I encourage people uh, to uh, contribute to this campaign. It is a worthwhile cause that is going to help out not only the university, uh, but our entire healthcare system in the province of Prince Edward Island. So thank you very much and congratulations. I'm very proud uh, at this point to introduce you to two of our students, uh, nursing student Angela Bryan and family nutritional sciences student Emma Gillis. Uh, both of them will say a few words about what this new space means in terms of their development as students and as professionals. Ladies. Uh, hi, I'm Angela. I'm a fourth year nursing student. I work in the lab at the school and I'm around the school pretty well every day, so I really understand about space. I don't think there's one more corner that we can shove a box or a student or anything. Um, I remember when I first came into nursing first year, I heard a little bit of whispers about we're getting a new school, we're getting a new school, and we were pretty excited. And then to be taken in to actually sit in on meetings and planning the new student lounge, we got to pick the windows and the chairs, so it was pretty exciting for us. Um, just, I think the reality for me, just, I know I'm graduating, but I'm coming back. Just leaving a basement of really the music department where we hear drums and we love the music, but not when we're doing an exam, not when we have a speaker in, 
and definitely not even the space of no chairs, nowhere to sit to learn. We would be standing, kind of squished in. We're actually at a point we had a student faint because there was no, not enough air to breathe. So it's beyond, it's just, it's overwhelming to me uh, to be able to move to a building that's gonna hold over 300 students and to share with another faculty is amazing as well. We're pretty pleased about that. Uh, many of the students, when I asked them, you know, what do you think about this new building, it was like, well, one thing that's going to definitely stop is getting on Facebook at 8 o'clock in the morning saying, where's class? Oh, it's at the Delta. Oh, okay. Where is the Delta? It's not on campus. Or going to the Mount, which we loved because it's beautiful over there. But just getting a sense of visibility that we are a very strong profession. Nursing is a very respected profession. And we accommodate, we do a lot of things as nurses, we compensate for shortages, that's part of our job, and to be critical thinkers. But we need to be visible on UPEI, because we are such a highly regarded profession. Um, I don't know what else to say, I'm a little overwhelmed. <laughs> I just want to thank all the donors, uh, just everything you did, the province. Um, I don't know what else to say. I really do also want to thank my professors for working so hard to get us something that we desperately, desperately need. So thank you all for coming out today. I appreciate it. Good morning. I'm Emma Gillis, and I'm a third year student in the Family and Nutritional Science program. I'm majoring in family science and minoring in nutrition. UPI is a great school, and it was always my first choice when it came to universities. The main reason is because of the campus. I love the small campus and how beautiful it is. I like knowing that in between classes, I will most likely run into someone I know. And everyone I've met so far is extremely friendly and extremely helpful. UPI is the only university in Atlantic Canada that offers the Family Nutritional Science Program, which was another major decision in my reason to come here. I love the department I'm in because we're like a big happy family. All the professors are very helpful and all the students are very helpful in helping you with your projects and papers and studying. This new building will mean a lot to myself as well as the other family nutritional science students because at present we do not have a building that has a lot of classrooms and thus we have classes all over the campus. Along with the classrooms, we will also have a larger kitchen making it much easier for us to have some space to do assignments. One other thing I think a lot of us will appreciate is the fact that we'll have a building of our own to share with the nurses to study in. Because I know at exam time, the university's camp, the university's library can get very busy and hard to get a study place. It's also very easy to study in a place that you're comfortable with and it's less stressful to study in a building of your own. From seeing the floor plans, I've come to realize that there's going to be a lot of natural light, which is a great feature and very environmentally friendly. Seeing as the Family Nutritional Science program is growing due in part to the fact that the Child and Family Studies students from Holland College are joining us, it is a new building is a very welcome addition. I know that all the Family Nutritional Science students as well as the nursing students will appreciate the new building and will make a lot of great memories and UPEI's newest addition to campus. And I would like to thank everyone for their great contributions and to my professors as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. You both did a wonderful job. Now I'd like to introduce President Wade McLaughlin to come forward to announce our private sector support towards the campaign today. Thank you, Janet and uh, Christian, um, Angela and Emma. The Premier, thank you, and uh, the government for your support to come forward with the the first 7.2 million toward this uh, marvelous project. Uh, it's, uh, it's a project that's been awaited, uh, that's been waited for, uh, for a considerable time. Uh, you spoke about winding back uh, the clock. I, I can probably wind back the clock to my first uh, summer as president, and uh, two of the people who nailed me early on will be sitting here in the front row. Uh, <laughs> Margaret Monroe and Vera Dewar, who uh, didn't uh, wait too long to let me know that uh, they were looking forward to the day when there would be uh, a building uh, and when there would be a master's program. Uh, and uh, all of this is coming. 
uh, as we come to the end of 2010. Uh, I look around at my colleagues in uh, family and nutritional sciences who've uh, worked hard uh, and worked in their existing conditions, uh, looking forward to having uh, expanded facilities, uh, better ventilated uh, facilities, uh, uh, and uh, as of this fall, the fall of 2011, uh, a facility and a program that will include uh, another addition to our overall offerings for the benefit of the province, uh, prob the, the program in kinesiology. And this is really a story about collaboration, about timely initiatives, about people pushing for things, uh, pushing for things that uh, sometimes uh, take a while to arrive, uh, but pushing with a vision for a university that serves as a platform for the province in providing programs uh, uh, that are uh, needed uh, by the community. And as Gordon McKay said, uh, in this case, it's really the combining of family and nutritional sciences uh, with nursing in a collective statement about health and wellness in the full spectrum from uh, health promotion and uh, preventative health through to uh, caring for uh, all of our needs uh, uh, toward the acute end of the spectrum and toward the the full spectrum of life. So a lot of people have been uh, responsible uh, for, for getting us here. Uh, you'll see, uh, and you've already had a chance to uh, study a brochure that shows uh, what a beautiful building this will be. Uh, it's been designed uh, for the purpose of uh, these programs. It's located in a space that will uh, really uh, refine this part of uh, our campus, uh, it will, uh, for those who've uh, attended events or hockey games or played in the old uh, rink uh, that was uh, on that footprint, uh, you can look forward to a building that will be warmer uh, than its uh, predecessor. Uh, and in fact, we can look forward to a quadrangle that will be warmer than this space has been historically because among other things it will help to block that northeast wind. Uh, one, of the, one of the breeziest places on the island many people have said over the years. Premier you came this morning and uh, I note that your colleagues uh, Doug Curry and Richard Brown are here and others have supported this in government uh, with 7.2 million dollars so we're embarking and we're well embarked, by the way. Anyone who's been in the construction business knows that by the time you're out of the ground, you're about halfway done. Uh, so this building will be completed in the fall of 2011, on time and on budget. The budget for that building, really we could call upwards of $11 million, and it will be by the time we get the equipment in there and get the grounds finished properly and so on. Uh, but we're on budget. Uh, which means that there's another uh, 3.6 uh, million to be rounded up to, to complete uh, that effort, and uh, we're actually looking at a, a, an effort that might uh, round up that or, or even more in a way that will enable us to uh, provide in the long term for the success of this facility and uh, of its programs. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a fair challenge to secure those kind of uh, resources, but what we, get, what we will know by the time we leave here today is that we've already uh, looked after uh, approximately a fifth uh, of what it is that we're looking for, uh, and it's coming from people who understand the value of this facility and these programs, uh, and from people who can show us that we have, in our own community, the, the generosity uh, and the resources that certainly give us full confidence that, that we will uh, secure the funds that are necessary to carry off this project and to complete it uh, as, we've, as we're setting out to do. With that, I want to uh, acknowledge the first uh, major contribution to uh, the private sector portion uh, of our campaign. Uh, and it comes from a friend 
uh, who uh, unfortunately or regrettably has passed away, Eileen McMillan Fulford, uh, who uh, gave uh, significant advance consideration to the ways in which uh, she would support our community uh, through the resources uh, of her estate, uh, and uh, who has provided very generously, in fact, uh, to support the room in which we're gathered today, McMillan Hall, in honor of, uh, of her parents, and uh, John McMillan and Colin McMillan are here this morning also representing the family, uh, and gave even more generously uh, in a measure that allows us to uh, kickstart uh, the campaign uh, for uh, the the building that will uh, house uh, uh, her profession as a nurse and a, teach, a teacher of nurses, uh, and uh, a building that will have uh, as its main lecture theater the Eileen McMillan Fulford Lecture Hall. And we're honored. We're honored that Eileen has provided uh, through her estate for a generous gift of which 400,000 will be dedicated toward this project and we thank Eileen. And I'm gonna ask Colin McMillan, Eileen, Eileen Fulford's brother uh, to speak, Colin. Thank you, President Wade, Mr. Premier, Minister. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, more than a century ago, John Henry Newman said that if you were to establish a faculty of learning, the first thing you need is a library and teaching materials. Then you need a building. And then and only then can you attract the faculty, administration, and students that you want. It's an honor with my brother John today, on behalf of our family, to participate in this launch in the memory of my late sister. Your program very nicely outlines her contributions and her career. But from day one, she wanted to be a nurse. From day one, father insisted she get a degree. There was only one university that offered that. She then went on to pursue a master's, and as you know, was instrumental in working with the Faculty of Nursing, as it then was here in the School of Nursing that preceded your faculty, and similarly in Ontario. From day one, she was devoted to both nursing and teaching. But above all, she was devoted to her students and better patient care, which the Premier alluded to. So it's very fitting in this hall, in this building, on this campus, that we thank you for acknowledging my sister's contributions. Thank you. Thank you, Colin and John, for being with us today, and uh, Eileen, uh, through you, for, your, for her generosity and foresight. I mentioned uh, earlier that uh, one of the first people to pester me uh, about the need for this building was uh, Dr. Vera Dewar, a uh, longtime nurse uh, educator in this province, uh, going back to the, the Prince Edward Island Hospital School of Nursing and then the Prince Edward Island School of Nursing and certainly has continued to be uh, an activist. Uh, in the development of the Faculty of Nursing uh, here at the University of Prince Edward Island. And uh, Vera uh, is, uh, is, is one of those people that I don't mind pestering me because uh, she's someone who uh, is uh, also prepared to, to back up uh, her activism with her resources. Uh, and we're very proud uh, that Vera is making uh, a leadership contribution toward uh, this capital campaign and it's a, a contribution that will enable uh, this facility to uh, have as one of its central features to pick up on Colin McMillan's comment about uh, resources and resources for study. It will have the Dr. Vera Dewar uh, learning resources uh, facility and uh, among other things, uh, it will, uh, this building uh, will benefit uh, from uh, a contribution uh, from uh, Dr. Vera Dewar of $300,000. Thank you, Vera. <laughs> and 
I'm going to now ask uh, Vera to speak. Thank you very much, President McLaughlin. Honored guests here today, it gives me great pleasure and satisfaction to make the gift, this gift to the capital campaign at this time. A number of you here today will no doubt remember that I was always emphasizing the, the necessity to advance and expand nursing education at uh, UPEI, and I did pester <laughs> a great deal. And when I was finished, Dr. Monroe would come along. <laughs> so <laughs> this new facility that is presented here today will provide new and, shall I say, futuristic learning and teaching equipment. It will enable the school to provide a Masters of Nursing program which will improve health care on Prince Edward Island and elsewhere. It will also enable the school to participate in research which will be an important spin-off in attracting national and international students. In summary, I can foresee that the addition of this new school will greatly increase our visibility and ranking among Canadian universities. History has shown that this point is already valid. It is very important that we all do our part to make this new school possible. There are many ways that this can be done. An advisor working with the university would be happy to assist you. And Tracy, go along somewhere she could take your money. <laughs> She didn't want me to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> Please remember, any gift, large or small, is very important. It is amazing what can be accomplished when we all work together. I am humbled and honored to be part of this happy occasion. It is a dream come true. I would be remiss if I did not give my heartfelt thanks to all those who had the vision, the foresight, and the dedication to accomplish this milestone in the history of UPEI. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Vera, for your generosity and for your foresight and, and for your words. Um, you said it better than I could and in a way that's meaningful to everyone here as we look forward to going through the next phases of the, the campaign to secure the resources to complete this project and to enable this facility and and our programs in, in nursing and in family nutritional sciences to, to go forward and deliver the benefits uh, that have been delivered, that will be delivered in the future and have been delivered over the decades in this province, uh, in this very important field. So that takes us to the point where we have two significant uh, gifts and it also as you uh, may have suggested, Vera, more than suggested, you said it very well, it gets us all thinking about uh, who, can, who else may be able to help uh, with this effort as we go forward. And uh, it, uh, it, gets, it gets a lot of people thinking about where there may be some, some net worth, I'll say, and some belief in, in this uh, project and in what it means to, to step forward. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that the first 
person or the first person we saw up here this morning on behalf of the Board of Governors, Gordon McKay, who chairs uh, the board committee that's responsible for this work, uh, has gotten to work along with, with his family and his uh, sisters uh, to uh, make a gift on behalf of the family and notably uh, in honor of uh, their mother, who's also a nurse, C. Jean Ross McKay. Uh, and uh, I see Gord's three sisters, uh, Carol and Lori and Connie, uh, are here uh, as well. And I'm going to ask Gordon if you would come forward to say uh, some words on behalf of the family and certainly on behalf of all of us here to thank you and your family for your generosity. I actually didn't anticipate this, but it, it is our pleasure, and it's, uh, uh, Tracy had asked me to provide, you know, a little bit of background about my mother, and as Wade mentioned, uh, my mother was a nurse, graduate of the uh, PEI School of Nursing. Uh, she grew up in rural PEI, uh, was uh, uh, one of eight children, seven brothers, grew up in the Roseberry down near Belfast. Uh, education was an important feature in her family, at, even at, 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 the, at that time. Uh, she had the privilege of going to Prince Wales College to complete high school, I believe. My sisters can correct me on my facts, but uh, then she, ended, uh, she taught for a while in Panet, and then she went to the PEI School of Nursing, and uh, she valued that experience both her experience as, as a resident of the Condal home and, and uh, nursing at the Prince Edward Island Hospital uh, is probably one of her most cherished memories because she referred to it so often over the years. Now, my mother's still alive, but she's, uh, she's, she's not that well. She's 88 years of age, and, and we would be delighted if she could be here today to make this, uh, this uh, gift on her own, but she can't be. But I, I know, I sp speaking for myself and my sisters, one of whom's not here. Uh, my sister Marilyn is a, uh, uh, she has a, a doctorate in neurophysiology and she teaches at Dalhousie uh, in physiotherapy. Uh, she was most supportive of this as well. Uh, but uh, we're all proud to be here and make this uh, gift on behalf, in, on behalf of our mother and in her, her name and uh, in memory as well of my father, but particularly for mom because of her connection to nursing and, and the value that she placed on that. I should just add as well that the uh, design architect, uh, in, in uh, cooperation with uh, BGHJ, uh, uh, Bergmark, Eamon, Hammerlin, Jones in Charlottetown, is uh, Brian McKay, Lyons, Sweet Apple, uh, is the name of the firm. That's uh, my sister's husband, my sister Marilyn, who, who teaches at Dalhousie. So this is a very strong family moment. And uh, I'm uh, very pleased, and I thank you for the opportunity to do this, Wade. I didn't uh, know this was going to be given to me, but uh, I would encourage all of you to go out. And there's so many connections to nursing and school of nursing, the hospitals and what have you in PEI, that I don't think this should be a difficult job for us to raise the funds that are, are uh, required to complete this project. So uh, it's great to see so many people here today, and I encourage you to go out and be ambassadors for the campaign and assist in raising the money from the, uh, from the private sector. So thank you. Thanks, Wade. Thank you, Gord, and to Carol, Lori, Connie, and Marilyn, who's not here, for your, uh, for your generosity and for, for honoring your mother in this way. I, if I'm not mistaken, or at least it was always part of the family lore as I knew it, that your mother and father met, at the hospital, is that uh, correct? So another reason to give, just to, <laughs> just imagine what that produced. That uh, everybody's everybody's got a everybody's got a connection, everybody's got a, a reason, and certainly the fact that there's such a great uh, turnout here today suggests uh, to me and to all of us who are involved with this that we can, with confidence, uh, look forward to securing uh, the further support. And let me just remind us then of the numbers that we're, we're looking at. Uh, we started out today with a 3.6 million that we are uh, looking for to uh, complete this project. And as I said, we can always 
exceed a target. That's what they're made for, is to be exceeded. Uh, as of uh, today, we now have uh, just uh, something under 2.9 million, but let's, you know, they're talking about doing away with the penny. Let's call it 3 million uh, that, we're, uh, that we're looking for uh, to complete this project. Uh, uh, tell your friends, uh, think about uh, uh, where your own uh, priorities are or where your, your net worth may be. Uh, we're glad to talk to you. Uh, for some, it may even be relevant to be thinking about that between now and the end of the tax year, and we're available. We don't, we don't close down between Christmas and New Year's when it comes to that kind of thing. And uh, <laughs> be glad to uh, be glad to see you. And uh, and and uh, as we know from uh, Eileen Fulford's generosity. Uh, it's sometimes the case that people are in a better position to do this kind of thing when it comes to their estate, and we're welcome, uh, we're, and we're open for business uh, in that regard, too. So uh, we're, we're glad you're here, and we know there are lots of others that you folks talk to that uh, may well be uh, with us in spirit. Uh, so uh, go to it. There are lots of chances to talk to people between over the holidays in the spirit of generosity and giving, and we're glad to be here this morning to uh, work together on this and to uh, know that by the fall of next year, uh, this building is going to be up, running, and paid for. Thank you. Thank you.